Hey everybody, this is TJR. And this is Robert Kinsler. And this week on Music Worth Buying, we're going to be discussing the recent biopic of Freddie Mercury and Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. But we're not reviewing the film so much as we are discussing the reaction uh, critics mm -hmm. versus the fans. Right, right. And I think we both kind of noticed that critics, of course, if you go to Rotten Tomatoes, check out the reviews, critics have been fairly negative about the film. They sure have. Yeah, some of the I, reviews I've read. I understand some of the reasons yeah. why. Mm -hmm. Fans have mostly seemed to have liked it. I Some fans don't, but mm -hmm. mostly it's harder to just fan reaction. But mm -hmm. when I look at you know Rotten Tomatoes and just the sampling I hear on comments, not just on this channel because I did do a review, but mm -hmm. on other uh, YouTube channels that talk about the film or reactions to the trailer now that the film's out. Most of the reactions from Queen fans, I would say, has mostly been positive. Mm -hmm. I, I would yeah. agree with that. And, and I think that's why we said, hey, why don't we shoot something? Let, let me first give a l everyone a little background. Mm -hmm. Other than Paul McCartney and Wings, Queen was my first big band that I fell in love with. Mm -hmm. I went and saw the band four times back in the day with Freddie Mercury. I was a huge fan. They were actually the first band I ever reviewed for my high school newspaper. Wow. Was was a Queen concert when I was a, in my teens. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm obviously biased. I'm a huge fan of Queen. Mm -hmm. Other than the Beatles and possibly U2, I put them as my favorite, favorite artist, you know. The diversity and also the four different personalities, kind of like the Beatles where everybody brought something to the table. You know, yeah. everybody was a great songwriter. Uh, everybody was great musician. People think of Freddie Mercury as this amazing singer. Which he, could he, play, he was. was, but he also yes. played piano and guitar. Yes, he did. You know, yeah, and uh, amazing. So I was really looking forward to this movie. But a lot. Uh, but again, and so for me, where it delivered. Let me talk about for me first, and then maybe we can get at why the yeah. critics don't like it. For me, was it brought out kind of that while these four guys were different, and I think that is brought out in the movie. They were, and none of them are shown to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know. What it shows is that these four misfits, these guys that probably had no business making it as musicians, became one of the most biggest band on the planet and created all these enduring masterpieces of the of the rock, you the know, the rock rock of the rock era. And I thought it did a good job of doing that. But for me also, and hopefully I'm not giving any spoilers, that last 15 or 20 minutes where they recreated... Mm -hmm. the, the Live Aid appearance, mm -hmm. just flat out. I mean, I was in tears. It was unbelievable, you know, how it transported you. And you could hear the magic and the power of rock and roll. You know, people aren't sitting there with their phones. They're just totally mesmerized. And they're all moving in concert with the... He, whether it's as sing or... Move, I mean, just how there was that complete synergy between artist and fan and, and audience. audience. And it was mm -hmm. unbelievable. And, and it's like that alone made this thing, uh, you know, a must-see event mm -hmm. and I thought it delivered you know and but it, it did show the band members as having warts and being imperfect you know and having uh, you know but uh, what are kind of what are your, some of your thoughts on that? well I also got very emotional and I said this in my room I found myself getting very emotional uh, when during the live aid sequence but of course that was because the film informed me that Freddie had informed the band that he had AIDS as they were preparing for that performance mm -hmm. and that he didn't have long to live. And of course, I, as afterwards, I said I did some research. It looks like that's not true. Right, right. He, he, didn't, you know, he didn't know he had AIDS until sometime later. So that really adds this gravitas to the film and... When I'm watching the film, I'm just accepting this as truth mm -hmm. because I'm involved in the film. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, I think about it and like, oh, okay, it wasn't quite like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the criticism has been against the historical inaccuracies. Though many fans have said, I don't care if it's historically mm -hmm. inaccurate, I still enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of said that too, that mm -hmm. I, I still thought, it, I thought as entertainment. As entertainment, that's what, yeah. The movie was fine. I do understand some of the criticisms that it follows kind of a standard formula for mm -hmm. these type of biopics, and I agree, mm -hmm. it does. As entertainment, though, it's still enjoyable, mm -hmm. it's still fun. But there was one critic I just read yesterday, mm -hmm. prior to us coming here, uh, where she stated, she talked about the fact that, you know, um, the whole historical inaccuracy thing. And she said, and some people... Will not let it go, let it go, let it go, you know. <laughs> um, and she said, you know, Queen 
was big and operatic. This movie is big and operatic. And who cares if it's realistic or yeah. not? It's, it's, she felt that it kind of was the perfect, the, the way a Queen movie should have been, mm -hmm. which is big and operatic and, uh -huh. and like, and a big show, uh -huh. a big entertainment. Uh -huh. That's what Queen was. Right, they were. And that's what this movie, should, she felt in that respect, it captured it. Now, some of the criticisms that I've been reading, a lot of the criticisms have been that this film didn't delve deep enough. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, I can see that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, a lot of these critics are, I think they wanted more of the dirt. I, that's what I think, too. More of yeah. the darkness. Mm -hmm. More of the warts and all, mm -hmm. I think. Now, But let me interject yeah, really ahead. quickly. If you do that, then the music... I guarantee you is going to take a back seat. The whether it's the studio sessions, whether it, the rehearsals, whether it's the the first shows when they're getting started, what, you know, when they were I think called Smile before they were Queen. To me, this music uh, or this movie primarily focuses kind of music as the the primary force. You know, Freddie Mercury. I mean, he's a very interesting character. The other members of Queen were very, but to me, kind of the, that's what's so amazing about it. it is a biopic, but the music is a major player. You know, yeah. and, and, and that I think was, and, and I don't know if that's because uh, the two, two members of Queen that were, so, that were the executive producers, Brian May and Roger Taylor, I know were very involved in the movie and, and stuff. And I don't, you know, whatever the reasons are, but I'm telling you as a person that loved Queen, that saw the Queen, I thought it was great because it's like I was sitting there, all these memories of seeing the band more than 30 years ago are flashing back to me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's hard to tap into those memories. I didn't have pictures. I didn't have that. And that was maybe why it was so unbelievable. And I would love if some of the other people that are watching this video mm -hmm. that got to see Queen as well, what what their reaction to, if they agreed with me. But that was an amazing thing about it, you know, for me. What I liked most about this film is that it did not forget the music. It was not like, say, the Oliver Stone, The Doors movie, yeah. where it kind of, the music is just kind of oh, God. on the back. Yeah. It was a good movie. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting movie, but the music is kind of just... It was about the uh, self-destruction. About you know, yeah, I, yeah, I mean... That's yeah. what I think people, I mean, what it, I think a lot of the critics wanted yeah. was they wanted the self-destructive. Yeah. They wanted that heavy drama. Like what happened to Jim Morrison there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the drugs and that. the debauchery and stuff, yeah. And you got a taste of that here. I mean, they a didn't bit try, of it. Yeah and, they, yeah, and they didn't try to ignore his sexuality and how that may have played a part in, in his, you know, in, in his passing and all that. I don't think it tried to, like, pretend that didn't happen, but that wasn't the, the focus. The focus. It's yeah. the music that's the focus. The music was the focus, yeah. And I think you have to wonder um, what... Yeah, and I, I really do believe that the fact that Brian May and Roger Taylor were... were and John Deacon, he retired. Yeah, he he's, retired. He's just kind of like... Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he deliberately said, "You guys are queen now, and yeah. I'm just yeah. I'm retired. I'm not going yeah. more to do with it. I don't, and, and I don't want that to come off the wrong way. I think he just wants to share, have a quiet life. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't want to yeah. be part of being a rock star anymore, or being part of a rock legend anymore. But I think the fact that their involvement was there is why it focuses so much on the music. Mm -hmm. I personally uh, think that if they were not involved, the film would have been about." specifically Freddie Mercury. Mm -hmm. And I, I I, don't... There might be another movie we should have that is specifically about Freddie mm -hmm. Mercury only where everything else is in the background. It's just mm -hmm. about him. Well, you could mm -hmm. make that movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you could definitely make that movie. But I would hate for that to be the only movie about Queen. Mm -hmm. If there has to be a movie about Queen, if there can only be one, I would... I want it to focus on the music, mm -hmm. the musical brilliance, the genius. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to disagree with you where you said these four guys had nothing... To had no business being in the biggest rock band in the world. I know you didn't mean it yeah, this I way. Yeah, I didn't mean it that way. But, I'm not as far as, yeah. But I'm going to say, yeah. I think these four guys, if anybody deserved to be rock stars, it was these guys because they were all, four of them, great, brilliant musicians, oh, yeah. songwriters, and they and challenged, yeah, and, yeah. and vocalists yeah. even, they were all vocalists. I mean, other than the Beatles, who comes to mind where every Everybody member sings. of the band is a singer? I mean, and, and people, John B. You know, oh, he's just in the back as a bassist. He wrote some of their biggest songs. Yeah, yeah, and it's amazing. I mean, and the, and uh, I think it's even under pressure that amazing collaboration they mm -hmm. did with Bowie. He came up with the lick, as far as I'm, yeah. my understanding is. So all four of these guys, these this was not a band where you take away one of them and it, everything would have been the same. It was a magical. Yeah, uh, you know, a series of events that brought Without these guys those together. Four, it's not the same. It's band. It's not the same band. Yeah, and people forget that Brian May 
and Roger Taylor also sang lead vocals on a number of yeah, Queen they tracks. Did. It was they not did. always Freddie Mercury singing lead vocals. They sang lead vocals too. People don't oftentimes realize that. So uh -huh. they were, you know, I don't think, I don't think that uh, uh, John Deacon ever sang lead vocals. Yeah. but no, he did sing backup vocals. He did sing backup vocals. Yeah. But yeah, so that's another aspect about it. But once again, I think if they hadn't been involved, that's exactly the movie we would have gotten. It mm -hmm. would have been about Freddie Mercury, it would have been about his demons, mm -hmm. uh, about his, d the darkness, all of that, the darkness in, in his soul, whatever you want to say it. It would have been about the self-destruction, mm -hmm. all of that. Right. And um, it might have had this dark, depressing ending where it ends with him dying of AIDS, yeah. you know, who yeah. knows. And I don't think the movie's trying to ignore that or forget that, but this is Queen, damn it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> that's why I keep coming back to that. This is Queen, damn it. I don't, I just can't believe that Freddie Mercury would want to be represented in that way. Yeah. I don't think anybody would want to be represented by a moment of darkness in their lives where they where they engaged in a lot of debauchery mm -hmm. and, you know, decadence. I think they'd want to be remembered more for their art. Right. Is what I think. I, I agree with you. Too now, too. one area where I will agree with these critics is that to the best of my knowledge, the other band members, they took part in a lot of that debauchery too, mm -hmm. from what I understand. That is completely played down. And I'm guessing the other members would rather like, uh, you know, we're, we got kids now. We really yeah. don't want that really. We're not really probably proud of that right now. Can we not have that? This is my own theory. Yeah. But I would guess that, you yeah. know. So yeah, it does kind of whitewash some of that. The one criticism that I want to talk about that I've seen out there, I forget which paper it was, is one of the major tribunes uh, here in the United States, was where they accused the film of being anti-gay, mm -hmm. which I don't get. You know, uh, you've got these band members in the 70s, which of course in America, we were extremely homophobic mm -hmm. in America. Uh, the The portrayal of Brian May uh, I forget the actor's name off the top of my head right now. Yeah. He actually has this great line where he says, well, you know America, you know Americans, they're, yeah. they're Puritans in public, but perverts in private, yeah. <laughs> you know, because they banned the I Want to Break Free right. video. Yeah. And, and it wasn't even Freddie Mercury's idea, according yeah, to the movie. It was the drummer's idea. It was the drummer's idea, and yeah. they were apparently parodying a British sitcom. Uh -huh. They were dressing up as characters from a British sitcom uh -huh. is what they were doing. So I guess the Brits got it, but the Americans uh, just didn't get it because yeah. they don't get that sit. They didn't have yeah. that sitcom in the United States. But they were saying that the film was anti-gay. It's like well, you've got the four band members fully accepting Freddie Mercury. Uh -huh. You've got men kiss. You've got Freddie, you know, kissing, you know, in public, uh, men in public, and you know, it, you know, it's like in full view. It's not being hidden anyway. Yeah. It's yeah. not being judged as negative. But they seem to. I think what they centered on was that. The straight members of Queen seem to be more down to earth. One, mm -hmm. you know, once again, that idea that they weren't as decadent. Uh -huh. They were more down to earth. And oh, look, the gay character—he's uh -huh. not down to earth. He's, uh -huh. you know, um, I will kind of, sort of agree that they did kind of wash, whitewash out the fact that the other members did partake in decadence, and mm -hmm. maybe they should have shown that more. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that makes the movie anti-gay. Yeah, you know, I didn't get that from the film. Uh, you know, yeah. I just didn't. I think the film explored that as far as it could. It acknowledged this aspect. You know, once again, not so much that, that Freddie Mercury was bisexual, and that's nothing. They say it's anti-gay. Well, he was bisexual, but just the fact that he at one point really delved into hedonism. Yeah, for yeah. a while there, uh -huh. he really delved into it, and a lot of rock stars in the '70s did. Yeah, they did. Straight, gay, bisexual, a lot of rock stars did. A lot of them regret it. A lot of them realized, uh, maybe that wasn't the best thing I could have done with my life at that point. Um, once again, I don't think this makes it anti-gay. Yeah. I don't get that. It's a very simplistic you know, approach to a movie that, again, maybe I'm a broken record here, you know, excuse the pun, is you know, it really is trying to focus on them and their music, and it, and it shows that he overcame some things with his family and with yeah. society and stuff, and he was able to be who he wanted to be. Yeah. You know, like you said, he probably feels even in the end that maybe he made some mistakes on in some things, but, you know, he was trying to sort that out. He was an imperfect yeah. person. His relationship with with not only men, but Mary, who was, yeah. who, and, the, you know, he had some regrets on 
with a lot of different areas, and also with the other members of his band. Yeah, they sh they showed him working those out, and at the end, he was a better person. Yeah, you know, it, which is kind of you know the Hollywood ending, right? I mean, hopefully, yeah. you know, you can go through some challenges and trials and tribulations, but in the end, you come out ahead. And like you said, it ends on a high note for the band. That the band was kind of seen as on its way out, was being you know with the new wave and with all these bands coming out. After they they blew away all the other bands at Live Aid. I watched Live Aid. They delivered the single best performance that day. U2 was on the bill. All kinds of people were on the bill. Queen blew them all away. And, and, most, and after that, they embarked on this gigantic, yeah. successful world tour. Some yeah. of those shows you can, I, I think you can get on DVD. I'm thinking of the one in, mm -hmm. that they did in Hungary. That you see that this band went back on top. And, and it's, it's just, a, I think, a great story, despite the tragic you know, way that Freddie Mercury died when Despite he was the only forty five. Yeah, when he was only forty five. Yeah. But you know, it I like the fact that it had you know, it is bittersweet, but it has a really beautiful ending, I think. That might be the why a lot of critics hate it because is because it does have a Hollywood ending. Mm -hmm. It yeah. It does. Exactly. It does. What I really hope for with this movie and what I think is really uh what I think might be one of the great benefits from this film and, and one of the the up uh the what shall I say here, the more positive offshoots of it is that I really hope that it instills in the more casual viewer a sense of the brilliance of these players, which I believe it will, mm -hmm. and that it will make them say, wow, I really should explore their catalog more. And maybe they'll listen to more than just We Are the Champions yeah. and We Will Rock You and, and Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Because believe me, Queen has so many amazing yeah. songs. It's It really, you know, when you get... Any one of their albums, almost, so, you know, whether it's uh, News of the World or Day at the Races or Night at the Opera. I mean, these are just amazing albums, and, and I would encourage everybody to check them out. And I tell people all the time, you know, A Night at the Opera is more than just Bohemian Rhapsody oh, yes. and You're My Best Friend. Yeah. Go listen to that album. It is stellar from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Every single note, it is just still the most mind-blowing album in the world. And I tell them, and listen to it on headphones, yeah. because the way that album was mixed, it's going to do some trippy things to your head yeah. when you hear it. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I just, like I said, I think there's, I don't understand this. I can understand some of the criticisms, yes. But when you start saying the film is anti-gay, and I just don't know where the hell that comes from. Mm -hmm. I guess a lot of critics just wanted to see a darker more depressing film, mm -hmm. I guess. But to me, Queen's music, even when it's sad, is not depressing. Mm -hmm. It's because it's like just... you said, it's operatic. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And like so... a long poem when someone dies at the end, it's still beautiful and grand. I mean, even if it gets quiet and yeah. and stuff like that, but you still have beautiful choruses and you have yeah. you know things that you know that bring, want to take you back to the theater again and again. Yeah. As Queen's music would does. Would you watch this movie again if it came the chance? I would. I would watch it I again. Would too. I know. I mean, I, it's not a movie you you know rush back and see again the same yeah. week. But yeah, when it comes to like HBO or something like that, I'll I'm definitely gonna plan on watching it again. I'll admit there is a certain amount of fluff to it. Mm -hmm. I'll admit that. But you know, when I was watching it, I but I, just like watching a Queen show, mm -hmm. it's fun and it's exciting. And I think this movie kind of covers that, yeah, you know. it does. I'm sure there's room for another movie about Queen, but if we could only have one, I'm just glad that it focused on the music. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it focused on all four of the members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad it gave us a taste for what they were like. Yeah. You know, um, Amadeus, I've said this before, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, not just favorite music movies, but just favorite movies of all time. And it does end. We do actually do have end with him dying. But it is such a glorious film, and it's, it, it, it does focus so much on Mozart's genius. Mm -hmm. And I think that film will make, uh, if, if people only have like a passing interest in classical music or consider classical music to be just background music, you watch that movie, I think you will walk away with a, an appreciation for the genius that was Mozart, and you will want to he actually listen to Mozart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this movie does the same thing. You will walk away with this, hopefully a greater appreciation for who these four band members were that were Queen, and go and listen to more of their music yeah, that you haven't yeah. heard before. Very true. So, okay. So, yeah. have we... I guess we've told the critics where they can go. I guess we have, yeah. We're critics, too. Yeah, we're critics, too. But so I guess we should tell I, ourselves where to what go. What I would say is everybody has a right to their opinion, but, oh, I'm, yeah. but the fans overwhelmingly 
I mean, the for the almost, most part, yeah, yeah I'd say seventy five percent. I think the movie within the first weekend had made all its money back and then some, which yeah. is pretty amazing. Yeah. So I, I guess the fans. So have, we have, might get another Queen movie since it hey, made so much know. money. Hey, you never know. Yeah, Queen Two or something, yeah. right? And if we have a sequel, I hope that that sequel has Freddie Mercury still with the band, and they go into outer space and they fight some evil intergalactic. Uh, bad guy with their music. Okay. And and no, I'm not talking about the Flash Gordon movie. <laughs> but I'm hoping we have a total work of fiction uh, that has even more Queen songs okay. in it and has all kinds of fantastical elements like dragons and griffins uh-huh. and any kind of fantastical mythical beasts you can maybe think they'll of. do like an animated like like the yeah. Beatles did with Yellow, Ye- Submarine. Yellow Submarine. Yeah. And and maybe we have a massive trilogy with great battles in it too. There you go. How's that, Hollywood? <laughs> How do you feel about that? I'd pay to go see that. (laughs) Anyways, okay. So everybody, uh, let us know what you think. And of course, if you didn't like the film, you know, that's fine. And we're not dissing you for that, you know. Um, But, and I do understand some of the criticisms. Yeah, no, I do. And I do too, you know. I I just thought that a lot of the criticisms were so angry and so... Yeah. Uh, Just so, it's so, is the word vindictive? Yeah, vindictive. Like there was a real... He, you know, it seemed like they were out to just get it. Like there was no praise at all. You know, yeah. like, well, like I mean, if nothing else, like I said, if nothing else, some of those studio <sighs> sessions yeah. that they showed, uh, because we've both been in the studio a few times, yeah. we know how that is. And I've been in the studio with with bands that are pretty pretty big, like lit and just stuff like that. Them, yeah. yeah. And I thought those scenes were so well done. Yeah. It's very rare that you have great dramatic scenes shot in a studio that really are compelling and add to a story. And give you an idea of yeah. what it was and, like to make those and albums. Stuff. And I, I thought the movie really had a lot going for it, and I really think it's great. You know, yeah. So uh, I'll stand by my, my review. Yeah, and, and so will I. And But let us know what you thought again, as always, and uh, any insights you want to share about the critical reactions. And you, when you said vindictive, you hit the nail on the head. But let's not forget, critics were very negative and vindictive of Queen during their heyday. Too. They were. They were. News yeah. of the world, uh, you know, critics were more interested in punk at that time. Right, they were. They were saying that was the second coming. Yeah. And, and nothing against punk, but uh, yeah, they, uh, critics were very uh, negative and vindictive no, they were. of Queen's albums, calling them overblown. Right. You know. And, you know, pompous and all these. Yeah. Words. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and uh, I'm glad time has, has proven that Queen does belong on the upper, yeah. you know, upper tier upper of echelon bands. of, yeah. of great classic rock yeah. and roll bands. Definitely do. I don't think there's nowadays critics, of course, will hail them. Yeah, but at yeah. the time, of course, we've seen this before. That's what happened with Led Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, and other great bands. Exactly. Uh, so everybody, thank you so much for watching, and uh, and let us know what you think. Leave your comments. Be sure to click like and subscribe, and click notifications so you can know when we release new videos. And if you want to really help us to make more videos and make better videos, please go to Patreon, pledging as little as $1 a month will make a big difference. Take care, everybody. See you later, everybody. Bye.